right now. This is something that is important for me as a legacy for our community and our country. A tribute to generations who have enriched America's history and are essential to its future. That really sparked my interest of, well, what is out there? What's really out there? Join us on a journey exploring traditions and teachings. One of my goals is to break stereotypes or preconceived notions of what it means to be Asian American. Culture and community. They just come in and they go, wow, this place is magical. It's something that you can look at when, you, when you're playing and you can be like, that looks like me. And the experiences shaping both our neighborhoods and our nation. It was really important to bring that culture here to the U.S. NBC4 celebrates Asian American Pacific Islander heritage. Thanks for joining us. I'm Un Yang. May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, a time when we celebrate the diverse cultures of this community and learn about their lives, experiences, and rich histories from a local painter using his art to combat dangerous stereotypes and teach about self-acceptance to a mother inspiring the next generation. We are highlighting the stories of change makers in our community. But first today, a renewed sense of purpose as AAPI Heritage Month commemorates the victims of the 2021 spa shooting in Georgia. Sadly, that was just one of the thousands of incidents of anti-Asian hate reported across the country, including several we've told you about here in the DMV. A DC shop owner pepper sprayed, another punched, and another spit on and called an ugly Asian terrorist. Amy Cho followed up with them to see how they're doing now. Some say they're frustrated over a lack of action from police and that anti-Asian hate continues to be an issue. A store owner punched in the face by a customer. This is what happened inside Max Trading in Northeast DC last year. What's a fucking Owner Chong Hu Lu says he doesn't let customers open items in the store and that this man was upset by that. Lu ended up needing 14 stitches and told us what the man yelled during the attack. you Chinese people. I hate you. Now, almost a year later, his face has finally healed. But Lu says he still has lingering headaches after being punched. DC police arrested a suspect, 30 year old Samuel Thomas, who is charged with assault. His court case is currently pending. Lu tells us he's still worried about his safety, keeping pepper spray nearby just in case. And the safety concerns continue for this shop owner, too. Yoon Han Zhang owns Valley Brook Tea and DuPont Circle. Back in November of 2020, this man came into the store yelling about COVID. Then attacked Zhang with pepper spray. That man was never arrested. Well, I sort of had this feeling nothing's probably gonna happen because it's hard to find one person in a city this size. Zhang says thankfully the man hasn't returned, but that racism still persists. We still have a lot of people, you know, verbal attacks, you don't belong here, go back to China, that kind of thing. What matters at the end of the day is who are loved and protected by our neighborhood. The support has also been pouring in for Kathy Chung. She owns the clothing store Meeps in Adams Morgan. Last July, she says this man was trying to pass out flyers but refused to wear a mask. She asked him to leave and that's when he got angry. You're an ugly Asian terrorist. Okay. Sir, come on. Get Sir. out of here. You are not welcome back here. As the man rode off, you could also see him spit on Chung. That man was also never arrested. That is frustrating. Um, it does make you feel like you you are in charge of your own safety. Chung says she did some digging on her own, trying to figure out who the man was, but wishes the police had been more helpful. It just seems like unless I call the police exactly when I spot him, um, no arrest really is going to be made. A search for closure that continues as these shop owners move forward after the attacks. Now, in that pepper spray attack at Valley Brook Tea, D.C. police tell us they did figure out who the attacker was, but that prosecutors decided not to press charges, which is why the man was never arrested. Now, we asked the U.S. Attorney's Office why that was. They declined to say. Un? Amy Cho, thank you. 
One plan to further counter AAPI hate and better educate others on the group's legacy is now making its way through Congress. A bill introduced by New York Congresswoman Grace Meng would begin to study the possibility of building a new museum of Asian Pacific American history and culture. I spoke with Congresswoman Meng about what that would mean and the road ahead. I've actually been working on this bill for a couple of years now. I think I first introduced it in 2015, um, and I didn't know when and if it would ever be able to come up for a vote. Um, this year, I think, is especially meaningful because of so much of what our AAPI community has been through. Uh, whether it's COVID or uh, rising incidents of bias and violence towards our community. Um, and so what we know is that the solution must be uh, multi-pronged. There's not one magic pill or one piece of legislation that will solve our problem overnight. In the longer term, I really believe it's important to address so many of the stereotypes that too many people in this country have about Asian Americans. Still too many people look at someone that looks like me and assumes that I am not American and that assumes that I am uh, a foreigner. Um, and so in order to change that perspective, we have to increase education and a way to do this, whether for Americans here in this country or visitors to our nation's capital, uh, is to have an institution that incorporates all of the history, uh, the contributions, our culture, and the challenges that our community has faced in this nation's history. Absolutely. The idea that being Asian is being American in this country has been difficult to convey, even though Asian Americans have been in this country for generations, even longer than many European immigrants. You said there is no magic solution, but why is it so important to continue on the path that you're doing? What would you like to see in this museum to help bring that message forward? The thing about our API community is that it is in itself very diverse, whether it's East Asian, South Asian, Native Hawaiians, we want to make sure that we are incorporating as many stories as possible. Um, the major part of this bill that passed is to establish uh, a, a committee that would go towards that, experts in AAPI culture, in museum building, to make sure that we are including everyone. Um, and so that's, that's my, my goal, that no one feels left out. The bill passed in the House last month. It now heads to the Senate. If it passes there, the commission would have 18 months to complete the full study. The theme of representation, an important one. Coming up next, how a local mother is making sure her daughter sees herself in the toys she plays with. And it is rocket science. We'll meet the NASA engineer with some local ties that's in charge of a big part of the mission to Mars. Register for the power of the AAPI community event at NBCWashington.com slash community. At m and Bank, we embrace all of the people who make up our communities. In honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we pay tribute to generations of AAPI Americans, commemorating the influence of the past and present and applauding the innovative contributions impacting our future. m and is proud to sponsor Celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage on NBC4. Together, we can celebrate and empower the diverse communities in which we live and work. The first Saturday in May, you're invited to the Run for the Roses. And when the hats go on, all bets are off. The Kentucky Derby, today, 2.30 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Rise and shine, people. This season, we're doing Sunday brunch in the big leagues. And it all starts Mother's Day at Fenway. White Sox, Red Sox. MLB Sunday leadoff on NBC and Peacock. Cirque du Soleil is back under the big top with a world of wonder where reality is relative and seeing is disbelieving. Curios, Cabinet of Curiosities, from July 29th to September 25th at Tyson's 2. Tickets start at just $50 at CirqueDuSoleil.com. 
I didn't think that I would be here today with two children. I would want other women to know that GW is a place where no matter what type of pregnancy you're having, you're going to get great care. They have the best doctors. I am so grateful for the pregnancy care I received at GW Hospital. For life's defining moments, the George Washington University Hospital, defining medicine. Confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. On February 18, 2021, the world watched as NASA's Perseverance rover successfully touched down on Mars. Dr. Swati Mohan, an Indian American aerospace engineer with local ties, played an important role in that mission. I recently spoke with Dr. Mohan, who works at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California. We discussed her successful career and how it lifted off right here in our area. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mohan. You know, your job sounds so exciting. Tell us more about what you do for Mars 2020. So I was the guidance, navigation, and controls, system engineering and operations lead. Basically, my job was to keep the eyes and ears of Mars 2020 pointed in the right direction and make sure that they were working right all the way from Earth until it landed safely on Mars. I mean, that sounds like a big job. Do you get nervous? I mean, how do you focus for something on that scale? It's definitely nerve wracking, but at JPL, we have tried and true practices that we've built over decades of flying these type of missions of how to prepare both the spacecraft and the team members for handling critical events like that. So we put ourselves through all sorts of tests and practice runs to make sure that on the day that it happens, we're calm, cool, collected, even in the face when things may go wrong. Now you grew up in Northern Virginia. Can you talk about what experiences or memories from those years had an impact on you? So I did almost my entire elementary schooling in Northern Virginia, K through 12. I have lots of memories of being around the area, going into DC and just being able to see all the museums and the history come alive really made it powerful. My very first internship and exposure to NASA was at Goddard Space Flight Center when I was still in high school. And that kind of set me on the path of this is what it is to work for NASA and ever since then I was hooked. Now we have something in common, certainly not anything related to your expertise, but we both immigrated to the U.S. when we were very young. Tell us more about your heritage and how it shaped you. My family immigrated to the U.S. when I was one. We didn't have a lot of money to travel back to India often, so we'd go back every maybe five to seven years while I was growing up. So for my parents and my family, it was really important to bring that culture here to the U.S. to make sure that they raised us with those beliefs and traditions. So we had a very strong family heritage, a strong family connection with all of our other family members here that really served to solidify that base and kind of blend the best aspects of that culture with the culture that we are in. Can you also talk about your experience as a woman in this primarily male-dominated field? Yeah, so guidance navigation control is a very math-heavy, math-intensive field. So it is, I would say, one of the more male-dominated fields, even within JPL in the greater aerospace engineering discipline. And it's not always been easy. I will say it has shaped my personality and how I operate at work, maybe differently than had it been a 50-50% split. I tend to be more aggressive at work than I need to be in terms of making sure that my voice and the voice of everybody else is really being heard at the table and the opportunity is given to everyone to contribute, even if not everyone has that personality, to be heard right off the bat. Dr. Mohan was also involved in NASA's Cassini mission to Saturn, as well as the Grail mission to the moon. So very impressive. Dr. Mohan's path in the field of science, but of course, AAPI people have a long history in the U.S. and involvement in everything from literature to arts and activism to sports and government. The Pew Research Center says AAPI people are the fastest growing racial group in the U.S., with a population of nearly 23 million people as of 2019. 
That's about 7% of the total U.S. population. Locally, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders make up more than 20% of the populations in Loudoun and Fairfax counties, about 10% in Arlington and Prince William, and just over 6% in Alexandria. In Maryland, nearly 20% of Howard County residents and 15% of Montgomery County residents identified as Asians. And as those populations continue to grow, many are finding how important it is to make sure their heritage is honored. That's what led a mom in Burke, Virginia, to design a South Asian doll when she couldn't find one for her daughter. Amy Cho has more on the story behind Every Girl Dolls and how this family now has a growing business. Whenever Kyla Thomas played with dolls, they didn't usually look like her. Her mom, Pyle, discovered that too while toy shopping. Definitely couldn't find a South Asian doll, um, one that I felt represented who we were. It's why she decided to make her own. She and another mom teamed up and hired a doll designer from Dubai. It took several rounds of tinkering to get all the details just right, like the skin tone and the traditional Indian dress. It wasn't something that I was comfortable wearing around my American friends, but it's so beautiful, right? Like we should be comfortable wearing it. So we thought it'd be fun to kind of normalize it for young girls who are growing up. The doll's name is Layla, and she comes with a card that has fun facts about South Asian cultures. It's something that you can look at when, you, when you're when you playing and you can be like, that looks like me. I'm hoping that that helps them to be more comfortable in who they are as they, as they grow up. I'm really proud that she made this. It looks really cool. I like that I can brush her hair and change her clothes. The doll is available online. So far, they've sold about 100. And Thomas says her company has big plans for the future. Creating more dolls with different skin tones of brown uh, to represent all the kids, all the brown kids out there. Thomas says she is also hoping to create a boy doll at some point and to make things even more impressive, she has been juggling all of this, starting her own company while also working full time in IT. On. Wonderful. Amy, thank you. Coming up next, Family Ties, the local business centered around chocolate and the Korean culture. Register for the Power of the AAPI Community event at NBCWashington.com slash community. At M&T Bank, we embrace all of the people who make up our communities. In honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we pay tribute to generations of AAPI Americans, commemorating the influence of the past and present and applauding the innovative contributions impacting our future. M&T is proud to sponsor Celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage on NBC4. Together, we can celebrate and empower the diverse communities in which we live and work. Monday, word games and puzzles, they're all the rage, but can they boost your brain power? It certainly feels like those gears in our brain are turning, right? We get answers from a top neuroscientist on whether these games can really make you smarter. Monday on News 4 at 4. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed is on sale now. Why choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because the Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed is really smart. It senses your movement and automatically adjusts to help keep you both comfortable all night. It's also temperature balancing, so you stay cool. It's so smart, it knows exactly how long, how well, and when you slept. Sleep Number takes care of the science. All you have to do is sleep. Don't miss our weekend special. Save $500 on the Sleep Number 360 C4 Smart Bed. Queen now only $12.99. Lowest price ever. Plus, no interest until January 2025. Ends Monday. DC's home for the best of Broadway is Broadway at the National. Bringing you the six biggest hits from Broadway, including Six the Musical, Tina the Tina Turner Musical, Jagged Little Pill, Disney's Aladdin, Beetlejuice, and Hadestown. Plus, add on more hit shows to your package. Your best ticket to Broadway is Broadway at the National. Don't wait. Ensure the best prices by subscribing early. Visit broadwayatthenational.com. The Stanley Cup playoffs are here. And NBC Sports Washington is the best place to watch the Caps in round one. Caps and Panthers face off for game three today at noon on NBC Sports Washington. Your home of the capital.
Welcome back. Now to the story of two sisters, a love for chocolate and a family legacy. Francis and Ginger Park are the owners of Chocolate Chocolate and their little shop in downtown DC has been serving up sweet treats for nearly 40 years. As I found out, the sister story runs a lot deeper. In this little shop in downtown DC, you'll find just about every kind of chocolate your heart desires. People always use one word to describe chocolate chocolate, magic. Francis and Ginger Park are sisters who've run their family business for nearly 40 years. They grew up in Northern Virginia and watched the world change around them. But their love for chocolate and each other has remained constant. We didn't go into business as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We went into business to stay together as a family after our father died. And we wanted to do something with our mom. Mm -hmm. And we all were chocoholics before it was a word. So for us, it wasn't about making money. It was about family. And you know, when people walk in our store, they feel that. They smell the chocolate and they feel the love. Their mother passed away a few years ago, but her memory lives on in the story she passed down to her daughter. She had escaped across the border before the, the Korean War, and she had some silk that her mother had given her. And she said, only part with this silk to save your life. Well, she made it across the border, and when she got into Seoul, the war broke out and bombs were dropping everywhere. Next door, home went up in flames. Our mom had the silk and she just thought, I'm going to die. So she ran through the war-torn streets of Seoul with her silk mm -hmm. and sold it on the black market in exchange for a big burlap sack full of Hershey bars. Black market Hershey bars. Black market Hershey bars and she came back to her house, bombs dropping everywhere, and she hid under thick blankets and started eating chocolate and said, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die with chocolate on my lips. Francis and Ginger are preserving these stories by writing them down. They are both published authors who've written several award-winning books that honor their Korean heritage. I kind of have a unique history because I was born at a time when there were no other Korean Americans. To my knowledge, I never saw one from kindergarten through college, except for, well, Ginger and my other siblings. <laughs> so I kind of grew up in that world between, you know, ancient Korea and modern America. It's kind of like black and white and Kodachrome. And a, and a lot of my work reflects that. Their writing has also allowed them to explore their own Korean identity as they carry on their mother's legacy at Chocolate Chocolate. Um, once I did start seeing a lot of Koreans in the area and the shops started opening and, you know, Annandale. And I just, I look at the younger people and I think, oh my God, they're so lucky. Yeah. They have no, they have some identity. They actually well, have friends and, you know, can go to each other's houses and, and actually feel what it's like to be Korean, which is something I never had. It's so amazing that they're now sharing their stories. Love those Park sisters. And as a chocoholic myself, I can tell you that chocolate is divine. When we come back, a local artist and the purpose in his painting, how his approach is helping to change perceptions. Register for the power of the AAPI community event at NBCWashington.com slash community. A DC artist is battling stereotypes with a brush. Anthony Lay creates paintings about Asian American culture and self acceptance. News 4's Amy Cho went to his home studio in Shaw and has more. All right, we'll do an orange cat. When Anthony Lay picks up a brush. You know, I love a good underdog story. Every stroke in his painting has a purpose. Telling the story of Asian American culture through canvas. One of my goals is to break stereotypes or preconceived notions of what it means to be Asian American or just to be a person. 
Lang grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where he was one of the only Asian Americans and didn't feel comfortable embracing his heritage. I didn't quite fit in there. I felt a little bit like an outsider. Essentially make myself smaller to get through. A lot of my work now is kind of breaking free of that and almost poking fun at those feelings in a way. You can see his humor in a lot of the work he does, like this painting called Bowl Cut, or this one called Not Your Tiger Mom. One of my lifelong goals in the art is to show Asian Americans and how multifaceted they are. They are not the one thing that you think they are. Lay studied landscape architecture at Penn State and moved to DC right after college. All of his art skills are self-taught. He and his wife also have a clothing line called Model Mutiny, a play on words from Model Minority. Everyone loves Asian culture. Everyone loves Asian food. So I'm asking for a little bit more, you know, deeper understanding, a little bit more empathy to learn about the people behind it because they created it. An artist honoring those who came before him and shining light on the Asian American experience. Amy Cho, News 4. Such an important message behind that art. It's just great to see it. We thank you for joining us, and we invite you to check out our content celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islanders on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Just download the free NBC Washington app. Have a great day.